Hey, I'm Art from the Art and Brie channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you 10 hacks, tips, and tricks to get you homesteading today, whether you live in suburbia or you've bought your dream farm and you don't know what to do next. I'm going to divide these tips and hacks up into two categories. The first category is for those of you who haven't yet bought your dream farm. It's for people who might live in suburban areas. The second group is for people who have bought their homestead, but they're overwhelmed with getting started, building infrastructure, and don't really know where to start. For those of you who haven't yet bought your dream farm, my first tip is to borrow land. There's empty land everywhere, depending on where you live, it might be an empty lot in a city that you could negotiate and start a market garden, or it might be pasture land if you live out in the country a little more. There are at least 25 empty farms within say 10 miles of where we live, no grazing. My next hack is to start with chickens or ducks in your backyard. You could get four hens and you could supply your family with eggs. You could learn about animal care, you could be really getting into homesteading and just doing it in a small way that you're able to do in your backyard. My next hack is don't worry about doing everything. Just have a garden. Honestly, if you focus on a small garden space in your backyard, you can have a much higher yield per square foot than if you take on too much and have a huge garden. My next tip or hack is start preserving food. You don't need to have any type of homestead as far as property goes to can food. You can buy food at a really good price at a farmer's market or from a local farmer. My next tip is to take on homesteading with another homesteader in your neighborhood or work with a farmer doing projects. They might even be ready to let you have your own autonomous project and you can actually do homesteading before you have a homestead. Now let's move on to the tips for people who already have their homestead, but maybe you're overwhelmed in getting started, don't know what to do first. Here's how you can get started now. If you do nothing else your first year, at least put some trees in the ground. It's incredibly easy and relatively affordable to buy a few apple trees. It will pay off 10 years later. You will not regret planting trees early in your homesteading adventure. Okay, here's one you can actually do right now if you're not even ready to plant trees. Prep for planting trees in the coming year. If you know where you wanna plant a tree, put a ring around it if you have any chickens that might be out. Put in a few inches of straw, hay, compost, and then just sprinkle that with whatever your choice is of a trace mineral, mineral supplement. This is azomite, rock phosphate, and gypsum. I think this is one of the best ways to plant a tree. And you're doing three things. One, you're conditioning your soil. It's gonna be a lot easier to dig that hole come spring. Two, you're already mulching the area, killing the grass, getting ready to plant the tree. And three, you're providing a food source that will be incorporated partially into the ground and you'll be feeding your tree with this work for the next year. My next tip is to start with one enterprise. Whether it be gardening, chickens, ducks or geese, fruit trees, canning, building outbuildings or barns, raising goats, a family milk cow, or pigs. If you pick one thing and focus on it, you're going to not only achieve your goals better, but you won't drive yourself crazy trying to do everything your first year. My next tip or hack is to use portable and temporary electric fencing until you know exactly where you want your fences to go. This fence setup with this little electric fence charger have allowed us to do things that we wouldn't have been able to do if we were waiting on putting permanent fencing in. Some people might consider this type of fencing to be temporary, but you can use these net fences for 10 years and they can be a really great flexible option and they can get you started now. Temporary electric gates have been a lifesaver for us and have allowed us to get started at things. These are just electric wires. They connect right over here and they've not only uh, deferred spending hundreds of dollars on gates, but they're very effective, easy to take down, easy to put up, and they can help you get started sooner rather than later. 
One more gate hack that was essential to us is actually using our four x four um, fencing for a gate. The fencing is permanently attached to this post and then it's wrapped around this board. And so it actually works as a gate quite functionally. Let me know what you think of these hacks, tips, and ideas in the comments below. Please share your own ideas on how to get started with homesteading today. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button below and join us on our journey as we turn this 100 year old farm into a productive homestead again. And we're learning everything as we go. Now I think I'm gonna keep rolling on into a little bit more vlog content, working with the animals, doing some projects, now I'd better get to work. It's been really cold, there's snow on the ground, and I'm gonna get some of this firewood up the hill to the porch so that it's easier to feed the fire the next couple cold days. One more tiny load to go into the house, straight to the wood stove. I get a small load because we want to keep the fire going to keep the house warm, but we want to avoid a very dangerous condition called wood overheating syndrome. <laughs> Wood overheating syndrome is just a technical name for where it gets way too hot in the house and it's dangerous because everyone just sits down and doesn't want to do anything. It's too hot to do anymore. It's too hot to do school. It's too hot. It's too hot to do anything. So just be careful, don't overload your wood stove on a day that's not that cold outside. We're having some guests later today, so we've got more venison laid out on the counter to thaw. When we had venison meatloaf the other day, it was so good. We're having it again. We're gonna serve it to our guests. And I'm gonna serve them pumpkin pie. Our dinner, our whole dinner is from the farm. It's amazing, in some ways, how little food we've put up, but we have enough that we can serve meal after meal. I was thinking about using butternut squash for the pumpkin pie so that even that was from our land. Ooh, good idea. Anyway, though, um, we're having green beans, corn, mashed potatoes, and venison. I wanted to show you one thing really quick. It's a product that I love. It's called Obanoff's Heavy Duty Leather Preservative. It's just an all natural shoe wax um, that I love. Easy to apply, it's really fast, and it keeps my boots in really, really good shape in the snow. This stuff smells amazing. It smells actually like honey and beeswax. As opposed to a lot of shoe products and shoe oils that are just plain gross. I was just online trying to figure out what's actually in this product, and I don't think they are gonna tell you their ingredients, but they do say that there's no harmful solvents, petroleum, or paraffin in it. What it says is that it's three oils with beeswax and propolis, which is bee glue that comes from um, tree resin, specifically evergreen tree resin. Propolis actually has antibacterial and antifungal properties, which can help prevent mold in leather. Another thing I like on their site, it says it's odorless after applied and will not spook game. I don't know if it's odorless on boots, but I do believe them that this is much less likely to alert a deer or other large game to your presence than a really stinky petroleum-based shoe product. I will put a link on Amazon to this product. You definitely still could get it in time for Christmas and it would make a great gift for someone who loves the outdoors. Just so you don't have to click over to find out the price, it is a little bit pricey. I'm going grocery shopping in the basement. Bree's going downstairs to our deep freezer. Is the light on? The light's on. Oh. There we go. Yeah, this turkey, 
This is a world famous turkey. Yeah, it is. Famous around the world. This is a turkey. From the 1.4 million view turkey killing video. Or... <laughs> Something like that. But I got some green beans. And some corn for our supper tonight. Yay. <laughs> this is a chicken from Justin Rhodes. This is one of the biggest chickens I've ever seen. Or maybe it's a turkey. I think it's a turkey. This is a turkey that we killed with the Rose family. We're going down to check on Dolly. I know we're updating on Dolly probably every day, but it's because the sense of expectation. Means she can have her baby any day. It's palpable. We're just like, bah, every single day. When is Dolly gonna have her calf? We're watching every single day, and it's gonna be really soon. I'm quite sure. Here's Miss Dolly, hanging out with the goats, eating some fresh hay. Hey, Miss Dolly. Hey, dear. It's not gonna be long. I wonder how many calves she's had over the years. I don't. I wouldn't say at least nine. I'd say probably five or six or something. We're watching her ligaments slowly soften here. She's holding her tail higher than she's ever held it. A little bit. And her udder is more full than it's ever been yet. Yeah, the closer you stand to a cow, the safer you are from getting kicked. Stand right up against oh, her leg. Oh, because then they can't go very fast. Yeah. You're trying to feel the calf? Yeah. Feel down real low. Right in there. Do you feel any hard spots? Oh, yeah. Right here. Can you feel it? Right here. Cool. I want to feel it to make sure it's... I think this is it, right here. Yeah. There's a calf right there. Having our cow Dolly is one of the sweetest things in our life right now, as far as I'm concerned. And we are just so grateful that we get to have this experience and have this experience with each other and with her. Well, that was another great day on the homestead. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Maybe we'll have a calf by then.